that's when I realized how many of those no's in my life have been beautiful. And when you start going through it, the guy who didn't love you back, the job you didn't get, the apartment that didn't come through, the friend who didn't turn out to be such a great friend, you start to see the patterns that those no's were just really guiding you. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Almost 30 started as a conversation about the transition from our 20s to our 30s. But then we realized life is full of transitions. So we expanded our mission. We are an intuition-led, wellness-focused lifestyle podcast that promises to deliver authentic conversations, diverse points of view, and insights rooted in optimism, growth, and intention. The Almost 30 Nation community is a group of purposeful dreamers who are smart, passionate, and always seeking the full potential in every aspect of their lives. At Almost 30, we're making magic together. We dream it, and then we do it. Thanks so much for tuning into the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Oh, welcome to the Almost 30 Podcast. Almost 30 Podcast coming in hot. Welcome back. Let's... I always... I'm like, how the hell did we start this? (laughs) I know. Well, it's... How do you start it with, you know... Hello. Welcome to the show. Uh I don't know. Just again. Sometimes I'm like, they are so annoyed by us. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's like you want to bring energy, but it's hard to not sound annoying. Truly. Oh. Maybe because we're around around each other, like around ourselves all the time that we're like, you're, I'm annoying. Oh, 100%. <laughs> everything I do. Uh, wow. How is everyone? Hope you're having a really great week. We're so grateful you're here. We are the Almost 30 Podcast. We started this when we were going through our transition from our 20s to our 30s. So if you're new here, that's where we started. But we just realized because of you all that this is so much more than that. This is helping you navigate any type of transition and just building a community that is supportive and loving and cool as hell. Yeah. Everyone's the best. It's so great to meet you know everyone. And it was such a pleasure to be in New York City to see. Oh, Yes. Yeah. That's so nice. <laughs> Hannah on the subway. Hannah on the subway. We were walking up the subway stairs. We were so sweaty and disgusting. Disgusting. She's like, are you Kristen Lindsay? I was like, I know you recognize us because we're <laughs> so gross. <laughs> no, she was so sweet. It was great to chat with her. She just, she's writer and screenwriter, which is dope. And she's doing really well. And uh, everyone's crushing it. I know it's cool with yeah. our community to see and I think we see them at every stage. So I think we see them in, in the in-between and in, in the successes and in the lows. But it does seem like when they come to us that they are at such a great place and that they've applied some of the things that the people on our podcast have talked about or the people on our podcast have spoken to. So it's just such a beautiful thing. I mean, we had someone else at, at Pop Sugar this weekend talk about how she got a divorce. She was in the process of going through a divorce and she completely has changed her life you know, in every sense of the word, her spirituality, her mental health, her emotional health, and and now is just living a completely new life based on some of the things that came from listening to the podcast. Yeah. And with a situation like that, like we we hear so many of those stories where they've kind of hit a point in their life that's really tough, but they're like, they'll look at us and they're like, but I'm okay. And I'm getting through it. And I have this community or I have the tools and I listened to this episode and it really resonated. So it's like, at any point that something is hard or challenging, they're able to move through it and like mm-hmm. learn through it, which is just so cool to see. I know. So cool to see how yeah, we... So we were in New York City. The day before we left, we had our event with Brie Melanson, which was just incredible. Just Dude, wanted to shout that out because was so there was like a hundred or so women there. And we, we had Brie Melanson from Vancouver. She's a channel and medium and she live channeled for the first time with a big group like that. And it was really, really powerful. Chills. Chills. You got chills. So channeling is when you basically open up your energetic space so much so that you could call in an entity, whether it's like a past person. So Wayne Dyer, like with Gabby Bernstein, or Mm. um, in this case, she called on her angels and guides. So her angels and guides were able to 
come through and Mm -hmm. speak with her voice, speak in her tone in a way and share messages. So it's almost like the energy is inhabiting your body during, during that time where you're sharing those messages. So as a channel and medium, you know, she's been working on this. She's been practicing it and it's a practice. You know, there are people that are born with their energy channels more open than others. And and this could be good and this could be bad in some cases, but she's been really honing her craft and did such a beautiful job just sharing, you know, allowing herself to be clear enough to allow in an angel energy, a high vibrational energy into her space to share these beautiful messages with our community. It was awesome. Yeah. There was there were so many messages, but the one I guess that I'm remembering now and it was towards the end was the we've already been here. Like our soul has already been here and basically, for lack of a better term, like planted signs and just things, moments, people, relationships along the way. And we really have to be open and aware and quiet enough in a way to see them and receive them. And that was really a beautiful thing to think about that like my soul has already been here and like I just have to quiet myself. And not like, there's so much noise, there's so much pressure and there's so much stuff going on for all of us. And it is so much simpler than we make it out to be. And it was just really, really beautiful. I know. I, yeah, that part was really struck me too. And it's so, so reassuring, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's so reassuring too, that what struck, what struck me was that we can tap into these energy beings, these light beings that are here with us at any point in time. So if ever you're feeling like you need support or you need someone to lean on, there is a team of your guides, your angels that are there with you and ready and willing to to jump in and help you as you need. You know, and in this case and in instance, this connection with them only increases the more you leverage them, the more you lean on them, the more you communicate with them. It's not something like, hey, all of a sudden I am at the lowest low and I fucked up and I did something wrong and I really need help and I need to escape. So I'm going to call on my angels. It doesn't really work that way. It's like the angels will allow you to experience what you need to experience or process what you need to process in this human form, in this lifetime that you are in now. But it, if the more you connect with them, the more you are able to ride the wave of those situations and circumstances. And the more you're able to play with them and, and enjoy their company and enjoy their um, support with you. Yeah. So that, that part really struck me too, that, you know, there are people that are really ready, willing, and excited to, to work with you and communicate with you. Mm-hmm. You could feel the energy shift in the room. Yo, it was wild. It, it was, was really wild and wild. crazy, kids. So we're all sitting in um, this beautiful WeWork space in, in Culver City. You know, shout out to the WeWork team. They've been such great partners with us through tour and just in the past couple of years with the events we've done. They have such a great event team on site and the spaces are so gorgeous. But there was, you know, 110, 115 of us there and it's a packed space. There's no other room in the space. And with that many women and that much different energy and that much emotion kind of going on because we've gone deep, it can be a lot. But as soon as Brie was able to tap in and and take a few moments to really allow that energy within her, her body, you could feel it was like, boom. Yeah. you know, there was mm-hmm. like a, Mm-hmm. It, it it felt like someone was there. You know, it felt like something else was there. It felt like there was something that changed. It was undeniable. And all the women really felt it there. And it was such a beautiful, a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. We also did muscle testing. So oh, yeah. she had everyone stand up and, you know, ground ourselves. And, you know, your body knows, you know, we say that, but I don't know if we ever practice it on a consistent enough basis or really sit down to think that our body is giving us messages every moment of every day. And something as simple as muscle testing can give you a yes or a no. And so we stood up and we asked really simple yes or no questions that we knew and we were able to gauge what our yes was, whether it was like a slight lean forward, which is 90% of people. And then a no perhaps is a slight lean back, whatever it is for you, maybe right or left back or forward was blowing everyone's mind. It's just so cool. It's something that you could do on your own by yourself. It's free. You can center yourself, get quiet and ask a question. And usually it's what you already know. It's like that gut hit and it's just a confirmation. But I just love that part just to make it kind of like a physical connection to what we were talking about. But Brie rocks. I mean, it was just the best. And shout out to... We we were nourished and filled up by uh, Slendier, which is our go-to alternative pasta brand that is 
delicious. Dude, and so live hungry on Instagram. Olivia just rocked the recipes using Slendier. I, I could not be happier. Like Jeez. it was so good. And everyone was like, what the heck? This is so good. It was perfection. <laughs> Truly. We are, we are perfectionists. We have, I mean, not perfectionists, like, you know, whatever. We are perfectionists. We just want to be fit. <laughs> Yeah, we want to be fed really well. But for our events, we are perfectionists in our own right, in our yes. very small scale right. But yes. so to have everything run so smoothly, the Slendier pasta was so bomb. Like it was just, everyone loved it. Everyone was eating it. It honestly has like 10 calories. It mm-hmm. fills you up. So Slendier is, this isn't sponsored, but I'm obsessed with them. It's a it's a root vegetable. So they are able to make rices and noodles and all of these different pasta alternatives with this delicious root vegetable that has tons of nutrients, tons of fiber, all of these things. Yeah. So um, you can find are, it on Amazon. Yeah, you can Just find it on search. Amazon. Slendier, S L E N D I E R. Yeah. And I love that we're working with them. They're like newer on the market. And mm-hmm. so I just love like introducing a bomb brand to the market. Yeah, it was so good. And then the next day, we left for New York bright and early. And 5 a.m. <laughs> 5 a.m. And we were. I've had headed, makeup on for five fucking days. It's killing me. It's I have the breakouts me. on my. My chin and neck are interesting. I know. It's whatever. My skin is interesting right now. But yes, we were headed to New York for Pop Sugar. It was the first time that we've ever ever done Pop Sugar. And we're just so excited to work with them. We've admired the brand from afar for forever. And we're just so excited to connect with the women that were being featured as a part of the programming. I mean, Casual, Issa Rae, Chrissy Teigen, among many, many others, Tone It Up Girls. Uh, It was... Awesome. Yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy to be backstage. You know, we're in the green room, the green room where Chrissy Teigen walks in with her daughter, Luna, Mm -hmm. and where Mandy Moore is in there taking pictures and where Issa Rae is chilling before and after the show. So that was just a really interesting experience and, you know, humbling and, and just made me so proud of, of what we're doing. I was just so glad that we went the first day. Me you know, too. I was so thankful that we went on Saturday. So we weren't mulling over the information or we weren't stressed out. We didn't really know the lay of the land of, of the event before. We just knew what we what we needed to do and, and we just did it. So we interviewed, did a live podcast interview on hormone health, sexuality, fertility, birth control, all of those things that you guys love. Mm -hmm. You guys tell us very often that those are some of your favorite topics. We did it with the queen, Elisa Vidi uh, of Flow Living. She wrote Woman Code and we have done a podcast episode with her. So you can check that on iTunes if you just search, actually on Apple Podcasts, if you just search Elisa Vidi, almost 30, you can find it. But it, it flowed perfectly and she just, she knows everything about it. True. You know, nothing... Nothing passes her. She makes everything super interesting, super easy to digest. It, w- it was a pleasure. And the girls were like fucking in it. Oh my God. It's it like crazy. it's like Elisa was channeling and they I were know. like, oh. It was honestly <laughs> overwhelming because when you looked out in the audience, they were looking so intently. Yeah, Everyone was paying so much attention. It was almost like, you're like, are we doing this right? You know, I, it was know. Almost- <laughs> I know. But it was cool because you and I were kind of talking to them yeah. because... You know, some of them knew us, some of them didn't, but like we've both had experiences with, you know, our hormone imbalances and they've showed up in different ways. And just to be able to speak authentically to the subject is really helpful. And I think then the audience trusts us. And it was just a really nice, like, of energy. Like it was just like this container because. For anyone who hasn't been to Pop Sugar, you know, it's massive. It's they, you know, they do such a great, great job of programming it's a packed programming schedule. So there are a lot of things going on at once. So to be able to cultivate a space and an energy in the middle of it all was, to be honest, like kind of challenging or uh, kind of daunting to look at it. We were like, oh man, I hope we can like grab their attention. And it worked out and we learned so much. You know, each time that we step into things like this, we've never done something like Pop Sugar, but there's just so many learnings. And I think I was like, I was r- reminding myself a lot. I was like, okay, like be here, like because we're learning so much, you know, at every moment, even just watching watching the women like Chrissy Teigen and Issa Rae and the Tone It Up girls and their team and just observing like, oh wow, like I love the way that they carry themselves. I love the way that, you know, they talk to the Pop Sugar staff. Just the little things that you're like, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's taking note. So much that 
goes on that you don't think about. I think what I learned too is that you really have to just take ownership for everything that you're doing. Yes. You have to... And, and you do that really well. You have to own your session. So you have to make, you have to be responsible for making sure your sound is good. Mm-hmm. Your mic is good. Your seating is good. The flow is good. You know, it's, it's just, it's not like you walk on, everything is taken care of in some, in some, in some instances and cases it is, but you really need to be the owner of whatever you're doing and really just be present enough to know what you need and when you need it. Yeah. And I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, you know, someone like Chrissy Teigen probably doesn't have to worry about that anymore, right? Like she's at a very high level. But even so, like to have the experience we have to say, like, even if if when we get to that level, it's like to know, like, what's up with the sound and to know, like, staging and just these certain questions that we need to ask to be our own advocate in that space, I think is important to connect with the production staff and the professional and scheduling staff, like just, it helps to connect you and it helps to create a lot of trust within that ecosystem that creates these things, you know, like it was just, it was really, really cool to see. And we were just the two of us. We didn't have our team with us, which was totally fine. Like we, we got it all done and felt really good, but it was, it was really cool to see like the Tone It Up team just work like a damn machine. And I love to see that. And and how like how much of a family they are and how yes. they work, you know, it's super professional, it's super efficient, but there's so much love there. So I loved seeing that. And their husbands were there, which was so sweet. I just love those girls so much. Dude, like same. so much respect. Dude, they're a dream. I just, I I literally love them. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm at home when I'm with them. I know. You know, I just feel like I can say whatever, I can do whatever. They're kind, they're sweet, they're, they are truly, they care about their fans. You know, it's just so darling. You know, everyone is coming up to them, talking to them, stopping them, and they will stop with every single person and have a full on conversation with every single person that talks to them. Yeah. It was just so beautiful. Yeah. Love them. And then Remy and Stacey and the team, you know, Ashley were they just rock. awesome. And they just, yeah, they work in and out. You know, whenever someone needs something, they're just doing it. So it's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. I got to say, what's up to Issa Rae? I know. I was so say, nervous, y'all. This. So this is the thing about me is that we were, you know, if we do meet celebrities, I will probably never have a picture because I'm too nervous. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, uh, I don't want to. It's a weird, I completely agree. It's a, it's a weird ask for me, but it's not. Like for, truly it's not, it's not. But, but but for me, it's a weird because I honestly think it's like it breaks yes. the connection. So I just want to like look you in the eyes, tell you exactly how I feel about you and just be like, awesome. Like, I just want to tell you that like done so that it's not like, and can I have a picture? Which no hate, like, please do that because yes. I'm just a P-U-S-S-Y sometimes. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. Uh, but like... But I agree. It's just a weird thing. I don't know. I know. I'm just get a over big it. ass baby. Yeah. So I was like, oh, so nervous to meet Issa Rae. She's like my icon. So we're in the green room and she's chilling in the green room, just being so cool, being so, so casual, cool. looking fucking beautiful. The most beautiful person I've ever seen. And then I wasn't able to get her before she got on stage. She had her session. It was awesome. It was with her, one of her really good friends, Amy, who's also works on Insecure. Mm-hmm. And it was really about the show, building the business, all of the, all of that kind of thing. And then she was backstage. And when I saw her backstage, I was like, all right, this is my time. And <laughs> so I went up and we talked for a little bit and I was like complimenting her and I was complimenting Amy because they did a really beautiful job because there was a and a part with the audience, which sometimes can be challenging to disseminate the question that is applicable for the entire audience. Yeah. And there's four or 500 people in the audience. There, so they all ran up to get in line. They're like, ah! Yeah. There's literally 500 people. <laughs> and then there's like 200 people trying to get in line. And then it's just, how do you make whatever you're asking clear? And then, yeah. you know, it's just people, it, you get nervous. So they did a great job with that. And I was like complimenting them. And Isa's like, oh, you're just positive princess, aren't you? And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh no, she meant it in a good way. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. No, And I was just like, no, it's just you to be honest. But it was awesome. She was so, so cool. Dude, she was my friend. So cool. So easy. So cool. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. I'm like... I feel like she's one of those people too that's like the so talented and then the celebrity just came. 
You know, she's just like doing what she's doing. Like she's so talented. This is like her path and this is her passion. Yeah. And the celebrity is just like a byproduct. She looks fucking beautiful Completely. Too. Chrissy was perfectly dressed as well. Perfect. I was going to say about you said that you really felt from her talk at the level that she's at, which is like top, you know, she is still working her ass off. She's in the writer's room. She is shooting. Like, she's like, yeah, I might have a few days off in December. Like you think like you see celebrities in like the magazines and they're on vacation and this and that. And like, she is, she, she writes, directs and produces Insecure. Like she's like, I probably won't do that again, to be honest, <laughs> which is so cool. I love to see the honesty in that. And I love to see someone who's like, yeah, I love this part of the process. Don't like this. So next time, probably not. But like, I like to hire people and be around people and create a team that like supports me in yeah. places where I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. So it was just, I, I really enjoyed her interview. It was very, very honest. And, you know, she doesn't like say anything for the laughs, even though she's hilarious. She's just like, this is me and this is the truth. And it, it's great. Yeah, that's so true. I love her. And then Chrissy came with Luna yeah. and the gang. Yeah. It was crazy. She looked beautiful. And so it's beautiful. Yeah, we didn't I I didn't expect that she was gonna bring the kids, but it was so mm-hmm. it's it was such a nice, like I, I would think buffer. Do you know what I mean? In like a situation yeah. like that where actually she like brought Luna up on stage kind of impromptu and yeah. it was really sweet. And I think it probably keeps her not sane, but it's just like a thing. Yes. Uh, like a connection in a in a place where it is kind of production and this and that. And it was just really, really sweet. But she's hilarious. She's always herself. You never know what you're going to get. And I just love that about her. She looked beautiful. And she... Like what we learned too on a superficial level, like how to dress for this shit. Y'all, we're not fashion icons. I don't know if you know yeah. this. If you look back uh, early 2017, 16, actually don't. But <laughs> we're not yeah, fashion just icons. Google us, you'll find pictures from fucking 2016. <laughs> but we didn't realize, but thankfully we just intuitively knew, I guess. Yeah. Like when you go to things like this, and I'm sorry if this is like weird and unrelatable, but it's just in life in general too. Like thinking about the context and you're like, okay, the colors of this and like, what do I want to be wearing? And like, am I going to be sitting? Am I going to be standing? What is the angle? How should I part my hair? Like, it's so dumb, but it matters. And it's just crazy that like, we're having these experiences to teach us all of that. I know. (laughs) She had the perfect hair part to like, allow us to see her face with her hair on the one side, away from the, the crowd, her legs on the one side, away from the crowd, her, the dress was like a, one shoulder, shoulder dress, one shoulder. Yeah. The one shoulder was facing the crowd. The color was the pop sugar color. It's just something that uh, when you get to that level, your team, your mm-hmm. stylist and your hairstylist are thinking about. Totally. But as a viewer, you know, you're just like, wow, they look perfect and it feels so natural. Yeah. But it it's really well thought out and it's really thoughtful. And I think as we've done more things not related to her size or whatever, I've tried to learn to to do things like that. Like if we're going to be sitting for an interview, like I can't be wearing something tight or whatever because you fuck yourself up if you're like not dressed for the occasion. Well, yeah, it just affects everything else. So you want the little superficial details to kind of be real tight and in place and right. And then you'll feel much more comfortable to actually perform or share your talents or do whatever you have to do. Or do an interview, go on a date, whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing about it is it's like... Of course, you want to look good for pictures and whatever, but it really is like just covering the space so that I can be the best mm-hmm. and I could be present because I'm not thinking about my outfit pulling on me. I'm mm-hmm. not thinking about being uncomfortable. I'm not thinking about feeling out of place or whatever it is. So yeah. it's so much more than that. And to go a step further, like, you know, if we're relating this to all of you out there, like if you have an interview at 12 noon or you have a date that night or, you know, whatever it is, or you have an important meeting, like we started early in the morning where it's like we get up, we move, whether it's a walk, like we kind of went our separate ways, walked, meditated, went over some of our material, got our coffees and juices and whatever it was that made us feel grounded or at home or peaceful. We did it and we got up with enough time to do it. So we weren't rushing. So it's just thinking about those little things that could set you up for that bigger success. A hundred percent. You know. Anywho, anything go really wrong for us? I'm trying to think. <laughs> I don't even know. 
Oh, it was a really yeah, good it was a really good trip. Yeah, it was really good. We got to interview uh, Gabby Bernstein on Monday. Oh. That will be coming out in September. She's so cool. Get ready for that. She's cool. She's very cool. She's a cool ass, cool ass chica. Cool ass boss ass babe ass. She's a boss ass <laughs> babe ass mom ass. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cool. She's awesome. Um, all right. Well, speaking of cool ass boss ass babe ass people, uh, Sherry Salata. Oh, sweet Sherry. Yeah, she's the best. We had such a fun. It's like I honestly, it felt like yeah. I've known Sherry for a while, and she's I haven't. Someone you want to like hug? <laughs> Truly, you hug a lot. I just yeah, want she's her to hug. So sweet. She's- yeah, she's so sweet. She was. She worked with Oprah. For yeah, a really long time. Twenty year career. Yeah. And she came up from nothing. So not from nothing, but like her career wasn't like a career trajectory where you would predict her to be in the position that she is in and have the life that she does now. And we went back and talked about it and it was hilarious. She managed a 7-Eleven or a convenience store, I think. And that was hilarious. And we talked about everything she's learned along the way. We talked about her new book. It Mm -hmm. It was just awesome and full of really good, insightful, inspirational information for people that are currently on on the journey to hopefully ending up at a place like Sherry. Yeah. So her 20 year experience at the Oprah Winfrey show as the executive producer really set her up to be what she is now, which is a writer and producer, co-founder of thepillarlife.com and co-host of the podcast, The Sherry and Nancy Show. And her new book, The Beautiful No is out now, which is just an incredible book. Beautiful No and Other Tales of Trial, Transcendence and Transformation. And truly, like she, we get into it and she basically like, she's like, listen, I did everything wrong and everything turned out okay. Yeah. You know, and it was just like kind of a story of like, okay, everything's going to be okay. And I just like the title, The Beautiful No. You can think about in your life, if you look back some certain situations or instances where you have gotten a no, maybe two, my case was Soul Cycle. And I got rejected Mm -hmm. twice to be a soul cycle instructor, which led me to meet Lindsay, which led us to create the podcast. But there have been a lot of circumstances in my life where I've had beautiful no's, which maybe don't seem so beautiful at the time, but end up really directing me into a better place in my life. So having that faith is super key. Yeah. Love Sherry. She's funny. She's smart. She's just like a wild spirit. And I love her so, so much. So check out thepillarlife.com. You can get the book, The Beautiful No Everywhere Books Are Sold. It's It would make a great gift too, I think. I just sent it to my mom. And Elizabeth Elizabeth Gilbert touts it as a roadmap for transformation. So please don't miss this. Thank you, Elizabeth Gilbert. All right. Enjoy this episode. Just so you know, we are out on the road. We love, love, love to meet you. We are on tour. You can check out our tour dates and locations, almost30podcast.com slash tour. And we're nonstop till the end of the year. So there are many opportunities. And shout out to anyone who is starting a podcast, wants to start a podcast, has a podcast. We are relaunching your podcast pro. Yeah. And we have a workshop here in LA for anyone that is located in LA. It is going to be held at Biz Babes in downtown LA. And it is a full day intensive workshop for people that want to start, grow, or monetize their podcast. So we're going to be going through everything from creating your RSS feed to getting money from a sponsor. Uh, We'll have Q&A, we'll have lunch, we'll have drinks, snacks, which I care about. Um, So we're really excited to see you there. So that is a very special workshop one-on-one, not one-on-one, but in a classroom style with Lindsay and I, and that's on August 17th. So you can get tickets on the mm-hmm. website when you go to the almost30podcast.com slash events. Woo. We also have a new event. Yeah, we have our new event with Nicole Lappin happening September 12th. And we cannot be more excited. We've been wanting to do an event with Nicole Lappin for a long time now. She has her new book, Becoming Superwoman. And we are going to talk all things finances and confidence and just like owning and really standing in our power and also ways to, you know, avoid that burnout there. I mean, it's inevitable if we're like pursuing something we love and sacrificing a lot of things to get what it takes done, then we risk burnout. So how can we avoid that? Yeah. And with each ticket purchase, you get a copy of her new book, Mm -hmm. Becoming Superwoman. We'll have you know, everything that we normally do on site there. So that will be at the Riveter. And you can also get tickets on almost30podcast.com. Yes. All right. Enjoy this episode. Share with your friends. That means the world to us. And if you're called to 
rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. That also means a lot to us. Thanks so much for everyone that's written a review. We will read one on the other side of this episode to show our gratitude. But enjoy this one. Enjoy. We get emails every week from Almost 30 Nation telling us how much you love Hum Nutrition and how it's really changed your life, your health, your routine. And that is why we bring you brands like this. We use them, we believe in them, and we're so glad that you've incorporated them and it's working. I love Hum Nutrition. It's really easy. The first time I tried Hum, I went to their website, humnutrition.com, and I took a really simple, quick quiz to help them have a better understanding of what my body needs. A licensed nutritionist will review the results and suggest three to five supplements for you. What I'm loving right now is the daily cleanse that helps clear your skin and body from toxins. And I am also really loving tried and true red carpet. This is also for skin and shiny fuller hair. And I notice that my nails are growing like weeds, y'all. And lastly, I've been supplementing with vitamin D3 using the Here Comes the Sun supplement. This is really high potency. This helps with my mood. So sometimes I'm not getting enough sun, even if I'm in LA little June gloom going on over here. Uh, June, July gloom, this happens. And the vitamin D3 really makes a difference. I am obsessed with Hum. I trust them because their products are of premium quality. They are clinically proven, non-GMO, gluten-free, pure and potent, as I said, sustainably sourced. And it's great. You have a free personal nutritionist included uh, in your purchase. It's great. You can ask any questions. They are super communicative about it all and super knowledgeable. So go to humnutrition.com and use our code almost30 for 15% off your first order. That's humnutrition, H-U-M nutrition.com and use our code almost30 for 15% off your first order. Here we go. Chicago in the house. (laughs) Are you from Chicago originally? Yeah. I grew up in Waukegan. Oh, Oh, okay. Kristen knows it better than I do, but... There's a special vibe of Chicago people. I do. Don't you think? Salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. We're salt of the earth sort. (laughs) Truly. Not not really glitzy. Really just kind of steady. Totally. Friendly. Yeah. Like pretty... Easy, easy to get along with. Mid Midwest people are the heart, the heart of America. I completely mm, agree. Yeah. I what think they're truly like? the best. Brothers, you know, sisters, family, all that. It stuff. was super for me. It was super. Yeah. Um, well, I have a fantastic family. Eleven first cousins, and they're my best friends. Wow. To this day, and love and adore. And I grew up when I was eight years old. We adopted my brother John, and my my parents actually let me believe it was my decision. And, That's so sweet. you know, but when you're <laughs> yeah, eight years sweet. older, then, uh, you know, like I have, I was out of the house when he was in high school. You know, I was in, um, I was already graduated from college. So it was like later on in life that, you know, we grew really, really close. And then tragedy struck and he died in his sleep about nine years ago. Oh Poor little God. kid. And yeah, just, just in his sleep. Yeah, just had a heart attack in his sleep. No way. Oh. So that was that was that was cataclysmic, and, you know. And I really think it was only this year when I had to write about it that I even went there, because you know when when you are when you get munched on like that by life, and all of a sudden you're not um, untouched by disaster. I, I did only what I knew how to do, which is I'm a producer. Let me go into producer mode. I got to make sure my parents are okay. It's the worst thing that could ever happen to a mom or dad. Mm-hmm. I have my, my sister-in-law, who's a sister to me. She has little kids. And I'm the executive producer of the Oprah Winfrey Show. And we're coming off of winter hiatus in a minute. So really, it was only this past fall when I sat down and said, you're going to remember every bit of it from the first phone call um, as far as you can walk through it. And you're really going to immerse yourself 
in that experience so you could feel it. You know, I've been lugging around these backpacks of of Mm. unfelt grief, you know, just lugging them around, knowing it was there, knowing like, you haven't dealt with this. You haven't dealt with this. Like there is a there's a tsunami of emotion that are really holding you back. It's like mud on your wings in a lot of ways. And until you go right into the deep, dark heart of that and feel it all, um, you're never going to have the life of your dreams. How did you, how did you start to do that? Well, it helps if you have to write a book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah. I don't think I would have. I mean, people could even write their own sort of book. Yeah. You know? I mean, that exercise. If it, So pretend like you have a book contract. A deadline. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> for Colin. Yeah. <laughs> pretend like, you know, and you're on deadline and make yourself sit down because I, I waited. That was the last chapter I wrote, second to the last. And I was dreading it. Like every time I'd start to feel it, you know, I'd get weepy and shaky and I could find a million other things that I needed to do. Like, you know, I really need to get my closet organized. Oh or, my God. <laughs> there. I think Literally. there might be dog poop in the yard. <laughs> you know, yeah, honestly. Honestly. Like a million like, things. chili recipe that I'd love yeah. to try. I wonder how, to, how do you marinate but... tofu? <laughs> yeah, honestly. Uh, exactly. So I, it really took that external, and, and I'm also a little bit like that. Like I'll deliver on a deadline. You know, I'll show up for you more more likely than I would show up for myself. So right. I'm having that, having being forced to do that. Um, there's just a moment where it's like, well, you better get to tippy tap in the keys. And it was, it was brutal. It was brutal. It was ugly. It was super painful. Like I, I'd hyperventilate. I'd have to go away from it. Uh, three weeks would go by, I'd go back to it um, because it was one of those things that happened to every family and so many families that where you're blindsided Mm -hmm. by something that's tragic and unexpected and all of your spiritual knowings, everything you've read, all your notebooks filled with your spiritual wisdoms that you've taken notes from podcasts or books or whatever, you know, I worked at the Oprah show. I have reams of paper right. <laughs> um, and it, everything is put to the test. And in the end, you have to come back to what is it you really, do you believe what you say you believe? That life is eternal and that it's, that you're all, you know, it's energy and you're still connected and, you know, do you believe that? And um then when you, when you work through the pain of it, that the physical human piece of it, that I'm a sister and I had this horrible, horrible sadness and I'm still a sister, but I have a way now to access my brother and the best of him because I cried, I cried it out. Mm-hmm. And and during that time, so you are full on working. And I, I heard you before talk about basically how balance is bullshit. And so I can imagine yeah. when like when something like this happens so personally and that you have to kind of keep the ship afloat and running, and that's kind of more of your nature to do that. Like, how did you navigate that in a way that you know, you still got things done, but then was also taking care of the family. Because I know a lot of people tend to like get so overwhelmed when things in their personal life happen um, unexpectedly. Well, I'm not a great example of that, but I know now what could have been super helpful, Mm -hmm. which is you've already have to have those practices in place. You know, you already have to have your meditation practice in place and your physical moving your body practice in place and your plant predominant diet in place and your, your, um, the way you connect and the way you align and the, the, the information you listen to, like how you, the spiritual food you feed yourself. You have to have all that in place. And then, when the wave comes, mm. you're like, 
wow, I'm human. This is gut wrenching. I'm bleeding. Um, I don't want to get out of bed. All I want to do is cry. I can't believe it. I can't believe this has happened. And then you walk through that process to the other side. And because I'd never put myself first and because I was unwilling to make self-care my top priority, because I had other stress coping mechanisms like smoking and, you know, drinking vats of Diet Coke and, you know, 10 lattes Mm -hmm. a day. (laughs) And that was, those were my go-to things. You know, to to walk around the block outside of Harpo Studios and and have a cigarette was like doing a little breath practice. <laughs> a little breath work. You know what I mean? It's kind of the other end of the stick, right. right? And I just, I just wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't say, whoa, whoa, whoa! Look at, look at, you know, this this once in a lifetime ride, which you would never want to not have, could be so much easier and so much more joy-filled if you made radical self-care your top priority and you actually refined your practices to make sure they're all the things that make you feel good. Mm. But I didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So something like that would, like with my brother's sudden death, you just have to jam it down, put it under the bed, get it out of the way. Don't think about it. Take care of other people and move keep moving, keep moving, keep moving because you haven't created the foundation where you can process it and and go to work and take care of other people and yourself and pay your bills and things like that. Right. What have you, like, what have you noticed, I guess? You know, you talked about mud on the wings. Yeah. What have you noticed change in your life since you've re, or since you've processed right. this information? Well, the epiphanal moment for me, and it wasn't unknown to me. It just, I, I deliberately remained unconscious. Was that just as I intended, I had created and manifested the career of my dreams. The career of a lot of people's dreams. Um, and, but not the life of my dreams. Mm. So there was a lot of the kind of thing like, um, she never has a minute to do anything. Um, she can't keep a solid romantic relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, her health, you know, looks like it goes up and down. I mean, she swings 50 and 60 pounds here and there all the time, mm-hmm. but she works for Oprah. Mm-hmm. Got a big job working for Oprah. So that would kind of, that would kind of, you know, in the mathematical equation of how you're mm-hmm. doing overshadow everything and I'd still end up with points on my side. Um, and I could, I could tell that story to myself too. Well, you've got a big job. Well, there's a lot going on. Well, um, so when, you know, you can only keep the truth at bay for so long and then pretty soon it's like, are you that happy? I mean, are you happy? Are you? Uh, is this is this the life? Is th- was this the end game right here, right now? You're super successful. You have a ton of money, um, more money. I mean, I grew up. I was, you know, middle class, more money than I've ever dreamed of. I can pretty much go anywhere, do anything. I can, you know, buy great presents for the people I love and take care of my family. But I'm like, are you happy? Happy? And of course, the answer is no, because life isn't just one thing. Of course, the answer is no. And sooner or later, you have to say, we're supposed to live the life of our dreams. We are supposed to. All of us, you guys, me, all of us are supposed to live the lives of our dreams. So if I'm not going to do it now, when will I? Mm. And the scary thing for me was, because now I'm in my 50s, my middle 50s, which is older than I ever imagined. and I thought, oh my God, if you don't do it, you're never doing it. You're just going to be this. There's going to be all this other life mess going on for you right down to the the final edge. And I was like, that's not what I want because I do believe that we're all supposed to live the lives of our dreams. And if not now, when? And I want to do it now. Mm. 
What were those conversations like? So that moment that you chose you, Mm -hmm. like where you decided to pivot, what was, what were the challenging conversations and what would you say to those listening who really want to make that change and do something for themselves finally? Well, what I would say is nothing has to be a dramatic moment. Nothing has to be a do or die, a stay or go. You know, we we get a little addicted to the emotional drama of of decision making and things, but when when you are very slowly and deliberately moving in the direction of happiness and just leaning in like this feels good and this feels good and this feels good and this is good. And, you know, I I need to shore this up. And you know what? I'm going to go to yoga Saturday morning. All those little things that one does over days and weeks and months and years, it doesn't lead to drama. It doesn't lead to drama. So, you know, I mean, my, there's nothing I would do differently, maybe a couple little teeny things, but nothing I would do differently because it all turned out okay. But what I would say to someone who's almost 30 is, oh, you can have a much easier ride than I did and still accomplish everything I did. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can make it the joy ride. There, there are times when I made it a really hard road. I mean, I didn't start working for Oprah until I was 35. So even now, it would be five more years before I even walk through those doors in yet again, an entry-level position. So, you know, that was kind of my way, you know, roller coaster, cra- crazy mint, crazy business. But, you know, by the time when you have to really confront, you know, my brother had died, my mother had died. Um, we ended the show, um, own, you know, we la- walked into a completely new business um, that had its challenges and difficulties. And, you know, at the end of the day, everybody knows, you know, that it's time. Mm. And, and those things, you know, when, when you've had a successful career, it's not that tough. You know, um, where, where I feel, where I um, feel for people when, when you're 55 and you haven't had what you haven't manifested one dream. And I meet women like that all the time who are like, gosh, I just gave myself away in my 20s and 30s. And now I, I don't have the confidence. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to do. And that's the cautionary tale. For 20s and 30-year-olds, what are you waiting for? Yeah. What are you waiting for? I am pumped to let you know that I have incorporated something into my morning routine that has made such a difference in my energy and my gut health and just in like my morning ritual. So the first thing that you put into your body in the morning, I've realized is just so important. So I have to be intentional about it. And I have incorporated Athletic Greens. It's the first thing I drink on an empty stomach. This is the ultimate daily all-in-one supplement that is delicious and incredibly effective. 75, I'll repeat, 75 proven vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that are all obsessively researched to help you feel your best. And they're obsessively sourced, which you know we care about. Key benefits include digestion, so your gut health and liver support. I've been struggling with my liver recently, just the function of it. It's been working super hard. I've seen it in my skin. Since taking Athletic Greens first thing in the morning, my skin has been glowing. I've been getting a lot of questions as to why, what am I doing, what's going on, this is number one. It also supports your immune and nervous system as well as your energy production and storage. It's a great source of antioxidants and superfoods for healthy aging. You know I care about that. And adaptogens for hormone and neural support. So in the morning, I do one scoop into my glass bottle and I pour in cold water, shake it up, and I just slurp it down first thing. It's delicious. And I just feel so good about nourishing myself like that in the morning. I have no brain fog. I have a lot of energy and my gut feels amazing. So no bloating whatsoever. And really you square your day off with all of your nutritional needs. And 
listen, we're on the road a lot. So if you are too, if you're traveling frequently and struggle with eating well on the road, this is for you as well. This is also for athletes. If you are working out a ton, if you are uh, concerned with performance, this is a great, great addition to your routine. You know, I've tried so many so many green superfood supplements over the years. Athletic Greens is hands down, honestly. It is, it, it's, it's the best. It's the top, top, like the value. It is packed, packed with nutrients and I'm obsessed. And when you do the math, I'll just tell you that it's only $2.37 per serving. So think about the cup of coffee that you get or the green juice at your local juice shop. So much more than that. So think about it. Do the math. I honestly cannot recommend this product enough. And lastly, I wanted to mention one of my favorite things about Athletic Greens. They give back with every purchase. So some of their partners include Mary's Meals, which provides life-changing meals to some of the world's poorest children every school day, and Urban Light. Uh, They empower at-risk young males in Thailand to live a life outside the grasp of exploitation and trafficking. So with every purchase, you feed four children in need and the impact is growing. So athleticgreens.com slash almost 30, and you will get 20 free Athletic Greens travel packs valued at $79 with your first purchase. So that's athleticgreens.com slash almost 30, and you'll get 20 free Athletic Greens travel packs valued at $79 with your first purchase. I love hearing from Almost 30 Nation about how they are loving a particular brand that we stand behind. And I was so excited to get a voicemail from a listener who loves Chosen Foods. Here's what she has to say. Hi, Almost 30 Nation. This is Veronica calling from San Francisco. Um, Been a fan of the pod for a while now, but definitely such a sucker for the promos in the best way found some of my favorite brands through the products that the girls are promoting. Um, One in particular I wanted to talk about today is the avocado oil dressings from Chosen Foods. So been on a long journey with trying to find cleaner dressings, trying to make my own. It can be a mess. It can be really hard. They can taste super weird and ruin a whole meal. Um, But with the Chosen Food ones, I feel like all of them are good. My favorite is the lemon garlic and i also am a pretty big fan of the honey mustard their avocado oil there's no soy products there's no canola there's no sugar and they taste amazing you can use them as marinades you can put them on veggies you can make a salad with them really a lot of ways to like mix up face it up change it up but i definitely recommend giving it a go bye oh i love that So well said. So if you'd like to try Chosen Foods, you can go to chosenfoods.com slash almost 30 and then use the code almost 30 at checkout to get 50% off your first order of $10 or more. Yo, stock up on that Chipotle ranch. Don't say I didn't tell you. Chosenfoods.com slash almost 30. Use the code almost 30 at checkout for 50% off your order of $10 or more. So in your career before, were you just in jobs that you felt like you should be in? And then how how was it that you got to to own? And at that point, when you first got there and you're in the entry level position, were you like, oh, this is my dream. I'm so glad to be here. Like, were you? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I, I created a lot of suffering. I graduated from the University of Iowa and off I went with no plan, no... You know, just like, I'm going to swing it. I'm going to move to Texas and I'm just going to wing it. (laughs) And next thing you know, I'm in a typing pool Mm because I needed money. And Just like data entry? Like, well, uh, that would be fancy. (laughs) 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 This was was an IBM Selectric with like chalk little papers that you put in there when you make a mistake typing. No, it was typing at a title company. I was in the typing pool. There were rows of wow. women at girls and women <laughs> in, at at desks, and um, and then I got promoted. And you know, I would always I would take jobs like that and try to turn them into my path to retirement. 
I'd say, you know what, <laughs> I'm going to, and you know, here's the truth. But in, in six months, I'm like, I'm going to law school. So I took the LSATs and called home and my dad said, well, you can go to law school if you work during the day and go at night. And I was like, well, I don't know how that's going to work. I go out <laughs> dancing at night. <laughs> what am I, I going to go to school at night, dad? And from there I went to, I then somebody offered me a job, assistant managing a toy store. I went and did that. And then that shut down. So I went and managed a toy store. And I'm like, not once did I say, do you like this? Mm. Is this is this interesting to you? I'd just be like, you know, I'm just going to be the best toy store manager in the world. And I'm going to, maybe I'll run a toy company someday. It was always stuff like that for me. The last job I had before I moved back to Chicago in failure was I got hired to, um, well, the idea was I would one day be a supervisor, which sounded fancy, but I would be a 7-Eleven store manager. <laughs> so You would crush that. Path to retirement. Oh yeah, my God. <laughs> I was so, first of all, it was really hard. And I'm not even going to kid you on that. Yeah. It, it, is, it is hard. I am sure. Do they franchise? Is that how you own your own? Well, I don't even no. know. In, in tech, in <laughs> Did Dallas, you have a gun? In, <laughs> Dallas, <laughs> in Dallas, in Dallas, it was a big damn deal. There was a, wow. a, a it was corporate headquarters at the time. Oh. The, the gleaming towers were on, you know, like that's where you'd be wearing your smock going, maybe I'll get to the tower someday. <laughs> and then you'd go and mix your, put your hot dogs on the grill and mix up your cheese whiz and fix the slurping machine. So I had to actually be trained and certified, which is like boot camp. For hot and dog half the rolling? Time, <laughs> oh, half the time you're not sleeping either because people don't show up for work and you got to go back in. Oh, wow. So it was crazy. <laughs> it was really hard. <laughs> it was really hard. And everybody in the world looks down their nose at you. Yeah. So here's what I say to you and all your listeners. Honor those mm. convenience store clerks. They have deep rich stories. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going for their dreams. And oh my gosh, if you could see how people like, like literally I'd be out dancing and the next day someone I'd be dancing with would come in and be like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> look at me like, a double take. And I'd be like, yes, I'm in the store manager training program, <laughs> sir. So eventually I became a supervisor. So I had six stores reporting into me and I got to wear a suit and drive around in my car. But it, it wasn't my dream. And finally, I just had to admit right before I was going to the gleaming towers, I had to admit that I was going down the wrong road. I was not... I was not Dallas, Texas material. It wasn't a good match for me. I, wa I wasn't supposed to be in retail. And, you know, just furthering myself up was, you know, and getting promoted, like it would take the sting out of it. But at the end of the day, I'm like, but I hate this fucking job. Yeah. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. It's not me. It's not right for me. And so I'd, I'd imagine myself, okay, are you going to retire doing this? Is this, but, but I had my 401k guys. I had my little bit of saving. From 7-Eleven? Well, yeah. But I mean, That's you know, great. when you start getting a 401k, yeah. you think it's like all of a sudden chains around your feet. Mm -hmm. You feel like you can't go anywhere. And I would say, if there's one thing about me in those early days that I really, really cherish and admire is that I was always willing to start over. I'd be like, whoa, well, I was just starting to get somewhere. Quit. Move on and try something else. Quit. Start over again. Mm -hmm. And I would just keep starting over and starting over. But I mean, I, it would, I'd be pretty miserable before I'd leave. But starting over and starting over. And, and, and that's what I say. You start over till you find your thing. You start over till you get your break. You know, don't, don't, don't stay in something that doesn't light you up. How much of, of you staying in something that didn't light you up was that? Because I'm just thinking about kind of like opinions from family and friends. Like what kind of diverted you from really asking yourself all of that time? You know what I mean? Yeah, that would be a really good thing for me to know. And I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Yeah. Because everybody's just like, just find something. You know what I mean? Right, and, yeah. You know, I, 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 yeah, I, mm -hmm. you know, I had an internal pressure to do something significant. I mean, I wanted, I wanted the sexy job. 
I wanted to, um, I'm, I'm an achiever. I wanted to achieve. I wanted, I wanted to have the, you know, the, the kind of career that I'd be like, yeah, this is good. This feels really good. I really, really, I'm, I'm lit up. I'm passionate. Um, and, uh, you know, and everything and with everything that comes with when you're lit up and, and passionate. And so, you know, I didn't have that for a long time, for a long time. I got a big break when I was 27. Um, my best friend from high school's fiance hired me to be his secretary. So I started over again for no money, typing badly. Mm-hmm. And he taught me how to be a producer. And that was kind of the beginning. Like I knew, okay, now I'm in the lane. Now I'm in the lane. I'm not exactly doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm in the right lane now. This is energizing. It's creative. It's artistic. So, I mean, that, that's the one thing I would say. I would not stop until I found it. Were you ever like depressed during the in-between times? Like, yes, I was, I, I, I think of myself Gosh, I think of myself for a long time as being very depressed because I couldn't, I couldn't make the spiritual connection and I didn't have the information yet that I was creating everything. You know, I was just like, I was just floating about in the world and think and reacting to what was happening to me instead of vibrate, you know, checking my energy, really focusing on my thinking. What's the story I'm telling myself and lining up and, and knowing that almost everything that was happening in many ways was great, but that wasn't the story I was telling. I'm like, Oh God, this is so awful, you know, or I'm never going to make anything of myself. You know, I can't believe it. You know, I, I once thought I had so much promise. I had a lot of that negative self-talk going on. So yeah, there was almost at at every one of these turns, I would end up at one moment where I couldn't get out of bed. Mm. What about producing lit you up? Like as you were kind of observing him and learning? Yeah. Well, I love to tell stories. I love storytelling. I, I probably was storytelling from the time I could talk. And all of a sudden, even in commercials, you were telling a little story in 30 seconds. And there was a visual component. So there was, there was this marriage of art and language and storytelling and, and technical. And there was a technical piece where you'd partner with editors and sound engineers. And all of a sudden, this vision would come to life. And it was absolutely creative. You were creating things. Mm -hmm. And then moving your, you know, when you got to own, it was own at the time. The Oprah Winfrey show, you mean? Or was it Harpo? Yeah. So, so Harpo Studios was the home of the Oprah Winfrey show. Okay. okay. And all of that, that, all of that, yeah, Yeah. all of that came way before own the the network. So the Oprah show had been going on for 10 years. It was a phenom. Number one all around the world and advertising and television were very different. Like there was no way, but I just decided I was going to try. And through a series of mystical and magical events over uh, a year or two, I ended up in an entry level position starting at the Oprah Winfrey show at 35. And I, I was one of the oldest people there. Really? Yeah. I think there were maybe, like maybe there were a few people that were older, but, you know, most people were much younger than me. What were some of the mystical things? Mm -hmm. Like what was? Well, I applied for the job and I got a no. It was my beautiful no. The woman left me a a message on my answering machine. That's when we still had tape. We would rewind (laughs) and play it. And she said, I'm sorry, you're not what we're looking for. And I was like, Oh, uh, if you have any shame issues at all or worthiness <laughs> issues, that kind of talk Yo. is searing in its pain. 
Yeah. Because instantly I'm like, oh, that God, feeds of it. course. Yeah. yeah. Of course I'm not what you're totally. looking for. Oh, you're like, my you know what? Goodness. I agree, bitch. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. I know. I know. Oh, it was a lot of hubris that I even sent that in. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, there are those kind of people who keep after it. Just, you know, like, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I take no the first time. Same. For the most part, same. <laughs> Thanks so much. I'll see you. Yeah, literally. I'm <laughs> Thank like, you so much. That is it. There'll be no pestering or bugging from me. Mm. I will. You you give me a no. You will never hear it's or see me again. It's Midwest. Yes. yes. You will just never Respect. hear from me again. And so then, um, but I really was get. I, I was unhappy doing commercials. It had been six years. I had done shampoo and Six Flags and you know, all kinds of stuff. And I was like, I don't think it's, I don't think this is the end game. I like what I'm doing. I like the creativity of it. I don't think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that Oprah show, that really does look like that has meaning. I was, I was needing some meaning. Mm. You know, it's like, I'm willing to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week, but I want it to matter. And I want it to matter to me. I want to feel like what I'm doing really matters. And I don't know if convincing you that this hairspray will hold your hair when you do a wave runner in Miami <laughs> is, I don't know if that's my crucial message. <laughs> I just don't know if it is, but I don't know. Somebody's message, but it may not be yours. It's, right, exactly. And so um, I had many dark nights of the soul over that. Like, wow, this is intense. You're putting... You're putting your heart and soul into this. Is this your message? Is this what you want to be doing? And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to leave that agency. And now, since I got that big fat no from the Oprah show, which of course I would get, I knew that was coming, that I'll go and try to find a better agency job at a bigger agency with better brands and better accounts. And, you know, the freelance world at, at that point in time, I, I just wasn't made for it. You know, what, you know, especially I just told you, you know, I call you up, you say, I leave a message, you don't call me back, yeah. I don't call you back. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> That's not the freelance yeah. way. The freelance way is you freaking dial Hungry. 50 people a day. And I was like, okay, no, don't bother them. No. Oh, don't interrupt them. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll just say my yeah. name. <laughs> and then I go back to watching soaps mm-hmm. and getting poorer and poorer and poorer. And um, you know, it was, it was, it was bad. And then I'm like, Oh God, now I'm out of money again. And you know, it's, I'm a little old for this and, and what's going to happen. And finally I got this great opportunity to interview for a big, big producer position at a big, big agency. It was J. Walter Thompson in Chicago. I think it was, that was the first ad agency in Chicago. It was huge. Thompson, Leo Burnett, Put Conan Belding. Chicago was a huge advertising town. Not not really so so much anymore. And so I go in and I'm like, this is it. This is everything's leading to this moment. Here's my VHS of my commercials. And the executive producer was like, oh my gosh, you're like, this is how I remember it. You're exactly what I want. I can't believe you've shown up in my office. I cannot get you in here fast enough. This is going to be the greatest fit ever. I mean, I I walked out. I was like almost drunk with happiness. Mm. Like, this is it. Oh, my God. Call my friends. Meet me at the bar. Drink, 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 drink. Champagne, (laughs) champagne, champagne. Oh, my gosh. And a week goes by. Nothing. Another week goes by. Nothing. Finally, the letter comes. Dear Sherry Salada, we don't have any positions at this time. So devastated, devastated. Talk about can't get out of bed. Mm. So I meet my friend Erin for a drink. She's the one who had gotten me the, the big interview. And we're just, you know, we're, we're in our cups. We're weepy. I'm like, oh, I can't believe it. I thought that was it. And now I'm just like, I'm so defeated. I just feel so, so much like a failure. And she said, okay, if you could do anything, what do you really want to do? And I said, I really think I'm supposed to be at that Oprah show. 
And I was like, I can't believe I just said that. I mean, and she goes, well, maybe you should try again. I'm like, I'm not doing that. All right, let's go. Good night. And very soon after, there's a new message on my machine. We were cleaning out an old closet. This is so-and-so from the Oprah Winfrey show. We found your resume and reel. Will you come in for a freelance job? And I did. And a week later, they hired me. And that was the beginning of my almost 21-year career. And it was only like maybe, maybe five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years after that. One day I was thinking, yeah, remember that guy who like kind of screwed me over and didn't hire me? That was the most beautiful no I've ever gotten in my life. Because had, he, had that offer come in the mail and I said yes and moved into my great office with my big, huge salary and all my benefits, and started producing, I would never have quit that job to go freelance at Oprah. Never. Never. I I would have been too scared. Mm. You know, I need money. I need like stability. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. So that didn't come through. The friend who didn't turn out to be such a great friend. You start to see the patterns that those no's were just really guiding you like, because you're going to go this way. Nope, because you're going to go that way. Nope, because what you really want is over here. And you can go back in your life and you can really start to see that you are absolutely being led by your own, by, by what you want, what, what your soul wants. You are absolutely being led. You are, you're being blessed and helped and guided. And what I say to myself now when something happens that I'm not thrilled about, it's not what I expected. It's not what I hoped for. Like, wait, 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 wait. Let's wait and see how that turns out. Let's have a little trust here that the whole of you knows what you're doing. Yeah, it's empowering to be able to connect the dots, but so often people don't do it until Mm -hmm. way later. So were you able... So you get the job at Harpo working on the show and... I mean, it's already 10 years in to the show. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's a huge, huge deal. Like, were you confident? Like, uh, were you scared? Like, what was your first meeting like with Oprah? Like, I just feel like, you know, at 35 is young. You know what I mean? It probably didn't feel that way, but like it is young. So how did you walk in there yeah. with confidence? I felt like I had won the Powerball. I had had enough jobs to know that if she would have handed me a broom, that would have been a great way to get started. I, I, I had had enough experience to know once you find that combination of something that lights you up and meaning, you are off mm-hmm. to the races yeah. and then everything's possible. So, yeah. yeah. So I knew it was, I, and that was kind of a... Um, it was a little gift I had compared to some of the younger employees. Like, like you know, somebody would complain about some this or that. And I think, oh, you don't even know. Mm. You don't even know. This is, this, is, this is the Emerald City. This is the most amazing experience in the world. And you're getting paid to learn. You're getting paid to produce some of the greatest teachers of our time. Here you are. Every day you get to show show up in that energy field. So, so and and the, for me that was the Oprah show, and it was being, you know, in Oprah's slipstream and Deepak's and uh, Brene's and and mm-hmm. all those you know great great teachers because I was like, oh, I get to build a spiritual life. That's why I'm here. That's the meaning piece. That's the thing that feels so good to me. So my confidence came from knowing that. This was the opportunity of my life and I would under no circumstances squander it. And that meant that every day when I would report for duty in my good Midwestern sensibility way, my eyes were on my own paper. I wasn't worried about what the next move was going to be, the next job, the next promotion, who I needed to befriend. My eyes were on my own own work and I gave it a thousand percent no matter what it was. 
for the first time in my life, I got really nice jewelry. I know. It's why it's taken us so long. I know. And I, <laughs> well, I before would be someone that would buy really cheap jewelry from fast fashion places. And it would be, you know, $4 or $5. And I'd be like, oh, whatever. I'll just wear it. And then I'd lose it or it would, you know, tarnish or whatever. But I realized after wearing really nice jewelry that I'm comfortable in it. And it's weird with the cheap jewelry, I would want to rip it off my hands or my ears or my neck and I would feel really uncomfortable. It's like at the end of the night when you really want to take off your bra because it's like, you just want to be free. Mm -hmm. When I wear this jewelry from Ana Luisa, you know, our our new sponsor, I'm comfortable in it. I can sleep in it. I I don't feel it. It's like a part of me. It's so nice. Yeah, I love that they use 100% recycled gold in their products. So like you said, with these fast fashion brands, they do not use recycled material. So it's so bad for the environment. And you could just tell like they're using the same types of metal that high end, high, high, high end brands use. And it shows. And their design is also super unique. You know, sometimes I find that like jewelry is like, everything looks the same. I just love their design. It's thoughtful. It's beautiful. Some pieces are super bold and like statement pieces. Others are like dainty every day. I got that evil eye signet ring that I just love. It's so cute. I wear it on my pointer finger. It makes me feel powerful. Um, what did you have? That beautiful necklace. Yeah, I just got the beautiful, the Anna gold necklace. It was mm. like 50 bucks and it's super simple, dainty gold. So this is my favorite place to get those simple, dainty gold pieces that I can wear and layer and have on all the time. I also have their mini hoops. Those are 49 bucks too. And I just have been loving it. I didn't know that I could be someone that could wear my jewelry all the time. And because it's so comfortable and it's so high quality, it feels good on, um, I'm able to do that. So I'm so excited to work with this brand. It's so high quality and then it's affordable, Mm -hmm. fashion forward and really cool. So if you guys are interested in getting nice jewelry that isn't very expensive, expensive, but is fashion forward and cool. Um, I highly recommend you checking them out. Once again, like Lindsay said, they used recycled gold. Um, they're very high quality. They use the same jewelry manufacturer as Louis Vuitton, as Tiffany's. So they're all in that space, but they basically cut out the middleman by selling online. So um, Ana Luisa, said A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A.com slash almost 30 and you can use code almost 30 to get $10 off your order, which will be applied at checkout. Tell me, tell me, are you looking to elevate your home style? I'm raising my hand, but you're feeling kind of like, oh God, my place isn't that big. I don't know what to do. I'm also raising my hand. Uh, I have the brand for you. Articles, beautiful, modern furniture helps you make a big design impact even within a small footprint. I have a bunch of article pieces that are beautiful, well-made, and it's this like Scandinavian simplicity, which is so my vibe. They are just so well-designed. It's modern. It's simple. It matches everything. And what I love about Article is that they eliminate the layers of traditional retail. So they're able to keep prices low and quality high. Like there's no showrooms, no salespeople. You are just saving a lot of money. And best part for me, they're serious about shipping. So no matter how many items you order, every order is shipped at a flat rate of $49. Cannot beat that. And they have a 30-day return policy, which is great. If you don't like it, you just send it back. So we're really excited. Article is offering our listeners $50 off their first purchase of $100 or more. And you can claim this offer by going to article.com slash almost 30. That's it. Article.com slash almost 30 and you'll get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Life has been hectic lately and whenever I'm home, I have really good intentions of cooking for myself, but sometimes I'm just not so motivated. So I've prepared and I am really, really loving my Saqqara meals. So when I'm in LA, when I'm back in town, I have these meals waiting for me. Saqqara makes organic, ready to eat meals with nutritious and delicious plant-based ingredients that are designed to help you look and feel your best. With the 
Sakara. They have meal programs, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, they are delivered right to your door, ready to eat anywhere in the U.S. And these meals are specifically designed to enhance your energy, improve your digestion, and help with healthy weight loss if that's what you're after. And honestly, these meals are beautiful so thoughtful. They are chef crafted dishes. It changes weekly. So you will never, ever, ever get sick of this. And this is how I feel about meal delivery services. I am investing in my health. You know what I mean? I want to pay now so I don't have to pay later. If you've never tried Sakara, I would highly recommend trying level one. It's great. You can customize three or five days. It's super easy and just arrives right to your door. Nothing could be more convenient, to be honest. I cannot wait for you to feel better. You are going to experience a change in your energy, lots more energy. And honestly, this has changed, helped to change my skin. I am glowing. I am not experiencing the breakouts I was around my chin and I have less brain frog. These meals are super, super clean. So my body's not using a ton of energy to break down crappy food. And I just cannot be more grateful, to be honest. Like there's so much gratitude when someone creates a meal that is healthy, clean, intentional, made with love. And Sakara is that. So go to sakara.com slash almost 30 and then use the code almost 30 at checkout to get $60 off your first order. That's an incredible discount. So go to sakara.com slash almost 30. That's S-A-K-A-R-A.com slash almost 30. And then use the code almost 30 at checkout to get $60 off your first order. Yeah, what do you think it was like that a lot or that, you know, I see it and you see it now, but what was it about you that made you move up in that way? Because that's not normal. You know what I mean? Like your story isn't normal. I think it is. In the best way. I do think it is normal. I think it can be normal and I think it is normal because once you put those pieces together and, and, and it was all fueled with appreciation. Yeah. I mean, I I I I made a tough road for myself. So now I was nothing but appreciative. Um, I loved. I mean, the coffee bar. I was like, look at all this free coffee. My God, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, like there was nothing that escaped my notice. I was so filled with appreciation. You know, and it's easy. You know, like eight years in, though. I you know I would be off in a corner, being like, yeah, I can't believe she did that. You know, some <laughs> some producer would do something. Yeah. But I'd really try not to stay there long. That that sense of appreciation mm-hmm. and mission and you know alignment with what I felt like I was supposed to do, that kind of becomes the the wind beneath your wings. Would you say like for girls that are in the corporate world, you know, maybe they're in a job that they don't feel like you felt, what would you say to them? Like what advice would you give? Well, here's what I know looking back. Every single experience can be the joyride. But it doesn't mean you have to stay there. But you still can be filled with joy. You can extract some juice from it. You can shine your light in any experience. Had I looked at some of those earlier jobs that I was like, oh my God, this is such toil, as the opportunities for me to shine my light, that I was there like... um, spiritually undercover, if I would have had some of the the access to knowledge and information that you have now that I didn't necessarily have then, it would have been a very different experience. You get to create what those experiences are. It really is in your hands. And it kind of goes back to what we were talking about a while ago about, you know, this, this, you know, I see what you do. Oh my gosh, what 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 that would have been life changing for me to really have it in the conversation with me and the, and the women my age at the time, that radical self-care was the priority, that taking care of yourself, that, that there was nothing to replace that. Nobody was having that conversation. So, you know, taking advantage of the information you have now, the access you, you have to some of the great teachers of our time, the, the mainstreamness of things like yoga and juice, you know, and... And, and things like that can, I think, can 
completely flip the game for you. Mm. Yeah, spiritually undercover, I really like that. Just because it does feel, looking back on your life, all of those like odd jobs, yeah. moments, relationships are this kind of like shell. They are what they are, whether you're at 7-Eleven or you're working as a bartender, but it is how you react in the moment and how totally. you be in the moment. But that's, yeah, that's so beautiful. You're and the I, shaper. Yes. You're the yeah. shaper. But it doesn't mean that you have to stay there forever. It's just kind of like yeah. even using the your spiritual tools of, hmm, what would I most want? And then beginning to to do the vibrational and energetic work to prepare the way for your next thing instead of not being able to get out of bed and having to quit. Mm-hmm. You know, there there is a, there is an advanced way of moving through your life with the information that that is now conversational. You guys are talking about it all the time. So am I. It's the only conversation I want to have. How do we elevate? How do we uplift ourselves and others? How do we make the rest of our dreams come true? How do we decide what those are? Like how are how do we do that if we don't devote a serious percentage of our conscious hours to really daydreaming and dreaming up what it is? Mm. Because what you want, what I want now isn't what I wanted at 30. And what you want at 40 isn't what you wanted at 25. And if you can really stay on top of that dreaming piece as a, you know, um, developing that as seriously as you develop every other piece of your life, you know, then it's a flow. Then it's ease and flow. And it's never too late too. I think some people get tripped up because, oh, well, now I'm married and I have kids and well whatever. And I'll, I'll yeah. wait until they leave the house or I'm too old or I'm too this or I'm too For that. Sure. And it's just, it is never too late. What did you... So work. I have a great story for yeah, you. Tell okay. Us. So my brother dies. My sister-in-law, Jody, who, and, and, and her two little boys are tiny, mm. like one's two. And the love of her life, the love of his life, been together for 10 years. And, and literally as a sister, fam, like, Love her, loved how much he loved himself being with her. And it was one of that, those kind of things. Mm. So he dies and, she, you know, she and I just hold hands and breathe through lots of difficult things. She's at my, I'm in, we're at my condo in Chicago and we're in this little room I called the library. I'll never forget it. And she is 35. She got her GED hated school and has no job, hasn't been working. And now all of a sudden she's faced, she's a widow with two tiny little kids and they have tons of debt as did a lot of couples their age because they wanted this and that and this and that. And she's sitting across from me and I just had this epiphany and I said, hey, Joe, why don't you, time's going to pass whether you do this or not. Four or five years are going to come and go, whether you do this or not. Why don't you get your college degree? Oh, it's the last thing I thought you'd say. And I go, but time's going to pass. Like it's going to happen. You know, and, and that's for many of us, we forget you're going to be 39. What do you want to say when you're 39? She just graduated in May from Northwestern University. Wow. She's going into grad school to get her master's and she may go on to get her PhD. And her life, her willingness, just that conversation, I go, let's just stir the pot for a minute. Time is going to pass. What is it? What isn't, what's a big goal? What's a little something? What's, you know, where do you want to be? And, and she had no confidence. She didn't believe she could do it. She barely got out of high school. She's like a straight A student on a roll, Northwestern. So, you know, I look to her for inspiration and I know that's true of all of us. That the minute like you start feeling trapped at 30, you have a long, long road to walk then to the end of your days. You're always free. You're always free. Whether you have four little kids and 10 bucks in your wallet. You, you are always free. Whether you have a fabulous job, but you hate it and it pays a lot of money and there you sit every day, you're always free. Mm. 
And for you to see that in her, I think is a really important point because like sometimes we just don't see what others see. And so for you to say that and give her confidence, I think is just an important lesson too, where we can have that impact on someone. That's such a good point. And it's not the point in the moment, but it's like, it is really, really powerful to look at someone and say, I see this in you. And then for them to never have seen that before, but then feel it in the moment, it's like that's all they needed to make the step. I know. And honestly, I think I did that for myself. Yeah. Because every single moment of her walking through that experience inspired me. Mm. I'd say to myself, you get your ass up and go do something. Look at that. Look at that. She's raising kids. She's scared. She doesn't know if she's, she's going into classes. She's older. She doesn't know if she can do it. And then out comes the honor roll. I mean, it really is. It's wow. something. And it's just a really great reminder that, first of all, we, we all, our number one job after taking care of ourselves is, is, is upliftment. Upliftment. Because that's what fuels us. That's what makes us feel worthy and valuable when people are reflecting their upliftedness back to us. Yeah. One of the things that you touched on a little bit ago was about the self-care, radical Mm self-care. And I actually, this was a story that even before, you know, knowing you about the Oprah show, when you guys talked about self-care, you know, for the first time a long time ago and talked about prioritizing, like women prioritizing themselves and their self-care first. And I remember Oprah, I remember it was an interview, Oprah said that everyone booed in the audience. Yeah. Because it was doing it. Cheryl Richardson was on saying that you have to put the mask on yourself first, like using the airplane metaphor. And right. Some women had some problems with that at that time. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't now, but at the time they did because, you know, and, and at that little period, that little time of life, you know, as a woman, you were to sacrifice everything for your family, for your children, for your husband. You were to take care of everybody. And the idea of putting yourself first was the that word called selfish. That was bad. You know, if you were labeled selfish, that was a very bad thing. But, you know, there there's a different culture growing up for, for women in their 20s and, and, and in their 30s, early 30s, mid 30s that, no. It only makes sense, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, doesn't it just make spiritual, emotional, physical sense that when you are at your best, your love spills out of your pores into the world around you and everybody's better for it? And then, and on that, so you guys were like the first to bring a lot of topics and ideas to the forefront, you know, in the spirituality space, in the wellness space. What was that like? And you know, what advice would you give for a lot of the women that we have listening that live in Oklahoma, live in, you know, the, sometimes the middle, what feels like the middle right. of nowhere or where they feel like isolated and alone and the ideas that they have are different than the norm? Like what advice would you have for them? Well, I think find your tribe is great advice. One of our friends, Lori Harder. Uh, Friend too. We love I, yeah, Lori. I mean, she's she's amazing. and and. There's something um, I was I was speaking to her once, and I realized for me what that looks like is intentional friendship. That you know, part of shoring yourself up as you walk through life, and putting yourself in a position where you can live that elevated life you want to live is being very choosy about who you share space with. And not in a, in a judgmental way, just in a like, what's the right match? What's the right match? Because when I meet for coffee or I meet for a glass of wine, I want to be talking about this. I want to be talking about, okay, what else? What else? What else? Or listening to somebody else, you know, put their dreams together. So, you know, that the isolated piece, there's, there's a, a, we're so lucky right now to live in this world where you can, meet people in safe ways on Facebook who want to have the same conversation you want to have. You have access to information, to, to YouTube videos and, um, and, and lectures and, and blogs and 
and things that are super uplifting. What are you doing now, like in your self care routine um, that you've really s- felt has made a huge difference in relationships, relationships with yourself, right? And just kind of realizing even more of your dream life. Well, the biggest realization for me was that it was going to be personal. It was going to be a personal recipe. It wasn't going to be someone else's program or plan or like, which is what I've spent my life doing, just putting on somebody else's program like a suit of clothes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm on this and here's what I'm doing. And I'm doing exactly what you say. And um, so you can imagine working at the Oprah show, my God, every single program and plan came through. I mean, I was you know, a little bit like multiple personality disorder. <laughs> um, you know, I'm I running marathons that. and then I'm fat again and then I'm doing this <laughs> and I'm fat again and I'm on this program and blah, blah, blah. Right. So, you know, I think, and it was really only like three years ago when I just kind of said, stop the madness. What is the truth here for you, Sherry? Mm. The truth is what you know in your heart of hearts that, that, The life of your dreams is highly personal. And the recipe, the practices that create Sherry's life of of her dreams are going to be different than yours and yours and yours and yours and yours. And so get about the business of finding out which things work for you. What feels good? That's that's really it. What feels good? What feels good? Um, TM meditating, transcendental, that, that feels great to me. I rarely get two in a day which is the practice. I just can't do it. But I can get one in a day for sure. The exercise thing is always more a bit of a twist and a turn for me. So, right, But right now, I found in my new little town, my new little tiny town, I found a fabulous trainer who is really, really super likable and really good. So I go see her. I spin. Mm-hmm. I spin. I actually have a Peloton right now. Oh yeah, but there 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 is a little spin class in town, so I've gone there a couple times, and almost my head almost blew off my body. (laughs) It's been a while since I've been in a class. I think when I'm going at my own pace, it's much less than when I'm in a class. (laughs) And I met, you know, I go through. So I go through the areas of my life and decide each week where where am I going to flow my attention, and uh, those those are primarily the things right there. And has it been challenging to create boundaries like with people? Because I sometimes I feel like self-care is so personal yeah. and sometimes people don't really get it. They kind of, because they're not doing it for themselves, they kind of resent you for doing it. So has that been challenging? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you know what? That actually gets way easier when you're older. Yeah. You're just like, mm, totally. I'm not really interested in anybody else's point mm-hmm. of view on that. Mm-hmm. What, what, what always is the challenges for me is making sure that I stay interested in it. You know, that I yeah. like, that I continue to realize that it's the, it's the life force. It's the life giving force, those practices. Right. Drinking water, um, I'm, I'm plant based. That makes me feel so much better. And, and then taking the time to notice that, that I'm healthier than I was. Six months ago and eight and months ago feel and a year ago. Yeah. I feel better. And mm-hmm. and a big part of that, honestly, is is just cherishing my body in a very deliberate way. Because I have spent so many years just brutalizing myself. Just brutalizing myself. For the plant based, what was that like? Like what have you felt like? Well, the plant based thing was really a Facebook feed. Like I was watching animal stories. Uh and I met Esther the Wonder Pig, which was maybe about four years ago. And once I saw her with her silly antics and you Pigs know going so smart, going in the fridge for a snack and going outside, opening the screen door to go and have a good girl potty outside. <laughs> oh. What I realized is, oh, you are belly and kissy, my English bulldogs, and now I cannot eat you because now I realize, you know, it's. It's that thing. I mean, and I have no no judgment about anybody else. I'm 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 only in charge of me. But what I could see is for most of my life, I, I kept that consciousness so separate. Like it's on a piece of styrofoam. It's not uh it doesn't have eyelashes and babies. 
You know, I just would keep it very not a being. And if somebody were to invite me to see like, oh, come to dinner, we're using every bit of the animal, including their eyelids. Eh, I'm not interested in that. So um, once that came together for me, it was impossible. It was impossible. And every now and then I'll be like, okay, I'll have a piece of fish. And then I'm like, hmm. I don't think it's. I don't think it's my way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the interconnect connectedness yeah. of everything. The one. Listen, we're we're moving to meat breweries. This 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 slaughterhouse thing, mm. this farm factory farm thing. This will not last. It just won't. There's there the the, the brutality of it, the the harm to the planet, um, and that's why really smart people are spending billions of dollars investing research in. Um, What is our next way of delivering food and food that people want to eat? And it's it's going to be a marvel Mm. to see it. Yeah. Can we talk about the book? Yeah. Let's talk about the book. The beautiful no. Yes. Well, it it's it's been such a ride, such a ride working on it. And I was like, did I always want to write a book? I think I wanted to write the history of Poland when I was in fourth grade. <laughs> this is not that. <laughs> this is not that. But it it is definitely my gems. They're my gems. They're my moments. They're my treasures. They're the things that I figured out and that I was helped to figure out, supported in figuring out. And it feels like um, it feels like a big, huge sigh to be done with the the actual writing of it. And, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited for it to come out and I I hope people like it. I hope um, people are moved by it. I feel like each story is a little bit of a gem. Mm. I'm so excited for you. Yeah, me too. I'm pumped. I know our girls are going to love it. When does it come out officially? June 4th. Okay, great. perfect. It comes out June 4th. Great. And uh, you can get a free chapter, one of my favorite ones called Mm. I Did Everything Wrong and It Turned Out All Right. Mm. Oh, you have such good reminder. nuggets. Yeah, truly. We truly. are so excited you came. It was so fun to talk Thank to you. you. Yeah. I cannot wait so to share funny. you with our audience. They're going to love the book. And there was tons of gems in this interview. I was kept hearing for the audiograms. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's that was a dope saying. That was a dope quote. So we're so glad you came. Yeah, Thanks. you're magnetic. And it's just, it's inspiring too, just to see someone who's had such an incredibly uh, successful career turn back in and really take care of herself Mm -hmm. and, and pivot again and do something different. So yeah, I just, I think people freeze up and they they get paralyzed by the thought of pivoting um, at certain points in their life, but you are a perfect example of, of how keep doing it over, you know, smooth it can be. Yeah. I know. I love how you own your story too. Truly. 7-Eleven for life. (laughs) 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 Nice to those convenience store people. (laughs) They've got big dreams too. They do. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you you so much. We love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Thanks so much, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. It was so great to have you. Her book, A Beautiful No, is out now. Everywhere books are sold. Get it, get it, get it, get it for your friends. It's just such a great read. Great to have on your bedside table to open up to. Yeah. At any time. Yeah. I love it. There's a hair on the mic and it's tickling my face. Oh, get it off. Ah, get it off. Definitely my hair. Hair Um, is everywhere. We were going to read a review, but actually we just, we had to turn to the secret Facebook group. Yeah. The Facebook group is always full of positivity and light. It is the kindest place on the internet. And there was a comment today from Megan in the group that was just so sweet and thoughtful. And I wanted to to share it with y'all. Megan says, I just want to give a quick shout out to this community of wonderful people. I just joined the Almost 30 secret Facebook group a few weeks ago. I already found the courage to open up about something extremely personal in my life to 12,000 people today. Something that I have not talked about in 10 years. And after seeing the responses, I feel like I've had a serious therapy session today that has literally changed my outlook and has had a huge impact on my healing process. And it's all from this unreal community that I'm so grateful for. Chris Williams and Lindsay Simsick, thank you from the bottom of my heart for creating this space. I hope you both know the major impact you have made on so many lives. Um, okay. Oh, I actually Meg. didn't I actually didn't read it. I just read the beginning. And wow, that was thank you so much, oh, Megan. That means so much. 
oh, I'm just taking that in. Yeah. yeah Shout out is, to the group. It is a place where like you can share about almost anything. Yeah. And truly feel supported and seen and heard and loved and all the things. So, and I know it sounds cheesy for anyone who might not know, like be in the group yet, but it's really true. I know. Human it's connection really is true. everything. So, and it can be found online. And that's why we bring it in person on tour. On tour. <laughs> Here's the plug for the tour. <laughs> tour, tour. Nashville, Ohio, Columbus is basically sold out. O-Town, baby. Ohio. Whatever. Back. Philly's almost sold out too, bitch. Jeff, Philly, we have more room. <laughs> <laughs> Feel you have more room. Mm. Plus, top dollar tea, probably bought all the tickets. Um, <laughs> Miami, Chicago, New York City. We have three events happening. LA, we have the live show. We have a few events happening in LA. Nashville, there's two events. So come say what's up in person. Come meet your family. Yeah, almost truly. 30 nation. Oh, it's the best. Thanks so much for your support. As always, it really means the world to us. And it's why we do it, to be honest. So thank you very much very much. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for sharing with your friends. It means a lot. And the inspiration that they get from this may change their day. So thanks so much for doing that. And we will see you on the next one. See ya. Bye.